being a leader who creates leaders. That's where you should be pulled up. The amazing Christina is jumping in for Fallon. All right, so we have had a lot of amazing content so far, but as things have been said before, you are not going to get to Diamond without creating leaders. You're not going to go there alone. I think Christina talked about that yesterday, right, when she had kind of that epiphany. Um, I will even say, you can get to Emerald by creating workers, but if you want to go beyond Emerald, you have to be a leader who's creating leaders on their team. So we're going to dive into that here, and this is a huge, huge topic. I think so many people, whether it's some of us in this room, I know I have it one at many, multiple times in my business, whether it's thinking of your downline and applying all this, we all get hung up sometimes. If we're not where we need to be right now, if you have goals beyond where you are and you're not getting there in a hurry, then this is something that might be lacking, right? Because if we're creating leaders regularly, and they're creating leaders, and that is exponentially duplicating, then we're going to be moving fast, right? So we need to be intentional in this area. And that starts with taking ownership and it being us first. We need to be a leader. So the law of the lid. If you want to attract big leaders, if you want to raise up big leaders, you have to be a leader yourself. You're, nobody is generally going to surpass you. So that is something that we should be constantly developing as a skill and being intentional about in terms of our leadership. John Maxwell is still developing himself consistently in his leadership. If John Maxwell has to do that every single day, we need to do it like a hundred times a day. <laughs> so no one is too good for that, right? If you want to raise up excellent leaders, you have to be excellent. So that means working on those skills. Book club. Usually that means Instead of just doing book club in the bare minimum, you have to read additional books. You have to be like Christina and look at the things that are lacking and be intentional and do more. Um, you set the tone, you set the standard. Be a leader who people want to follow, people and leaders want to follow. So what is required of you? A lot of people, a lot of times that comes down to work ethic. You try and fit plexus into your life. And sometimes we need to have plexus and fit our life into that as well. There are priorities, right? Fam God, family, plexus, there are priorities. But fitting plexus into tiny little bits of our life is not going to hack it to really build a million dollar business. So we need to make those sacrifices and sometimes those are temporary, like momentum we talked about. If dinner is early, you, sometimes you make dinner early to make on two calls. Some people are in different time zone changes. I can't get on a call because I gotta put my kids to bed, or I gotta make dinner, I gotta do whatever. Fix that, change your schedule, right? What are your priorities? You have business meetings, treat it like a business. What are your expectations? What are your standards that you're setting for yourself? And then you pull that. Christina talked about vacation, working on vacation, things like that. Guys, and it's just for a season. But I don't think Jamie gave herself enough credit with this training. I think this training, if you will really hone in on the importance of creating leaders, this is what's going to create some of you who will come back next year as jewels and diamonds. This is not something you can miss. You don't have to be the best coach for your team. You don't have to be the best recruiter. But I'm telling you, if you don't hone in and accept responsibility for creating leaders, you'll come back next year in the exact same spot that you're in this year. Because you can work yourself to where you are now. Right? But I'm telling you, if you don't accept responsibility to be a leader who is creating leaders, um, then you're, you're not going to have forward progress. So this is for a season. Y'all, there are times now on vacation I don't touch my phone, which is not entirely true because I enjoy branding myself. So I do. I mean, it will. you'll, you'll, you'll find a flow, right? And it won't feel so choppy, but you got to start somewhere. You gotta start somewhere. So this whole idea of fit it in when you can, yes, if you want a paycheck that will fit in the gaps in your other pay. Right. But if you want something that's overflowing, you've gotta be willing to be overflowing for a little while. These are non-negotiables to develop leaders. Like you can develop skill sets, you can do a lot of things, but it takes being intentional. And we can't figure out what is lacking if you're not intentionally looking at this for ourselves and for our people. So. Visible leadership is 100% necessary. It's not an option. So I'm going to say and go through some things, and I want you know pipe in and stuff too. But 
look at these things with fresh eyes because I feel like we preach them and say them a lot so they can get overlooked. And I know these things, or I'm doing these things. Are you doing them? Look at it with fresh eyes, write it down. Are you getting in the team pages? Are you doing simple things like welcoming or commenting on posts or videos? And a step up for higher leadership is not just tagging somebody in an awesome post or a video, it's watching the video first, giving feedback on that video, because you are then positioning that person. If they did a great video, as a leader, shout out what they did. Shout out the things that are important in this video, give feedback, and then tag your people. But if you're just tagging people willy-nilly and passing along and you're not applying yourself or you're not watching and giving feedback back, that is visible leadership. So go above and beyond. Don't just do the bare minimum. Talking on book club. Are you unmuting and talking? Is your video on? We talked about yesterday with having your video and just nodding and smiling, paying attention, adding value. That's visible leadership. Visible leadership does not have to be standing up here right now and doing a training. There are so many things you can do with visible leadership in like the small things, in the big things. Stretch yourself. Are you doing videos and putting them on the team page? Do you have a YouTube channel and are you uploading them? That's simple. Create one. If you don't have one, create one. Start uploading videos. And some of you are thinking right now, I have nothing to say that someone else hasn't already said, except for you do. You're going to have a new recruit come along and they're not going to give a flip about who I am. But if they see that you're a leader and you have a training video on how to do a first post, do you have a training video on why it's okay to do things scared? You have credibility with that person and it automatically puts you on a platform as a leader. Don't just keep sending them my stuff. Don't do that. Make your own triplex video for your team. Let them see you. That way, it, it, what it does is it brings down the relevance. Because they don't know me, they don't care. So start creating those things. If you're a working full-time person and you think that there's a voice for that, be that voice. If you're a single mom and you think there's a voice for that, people need to know single moms do this, be that voice. If you're a pastor's wife and you're like, man, if people could realize these ministries can mix, be that voice. And put it in the team page because you are going to empower other people to do it. Your sidelines, people under you. If they see you doing things scared, if they see you doing things and even mess up, they're going to say, oh, I can do that too. Or she did it. Maybe I should try and do that too. It's so much more relatable because what happens is, is this. If only people who are gifted in the area of speaking are the only ones who ever show up in that way, they're going to sit over there and think, well, that's not my gifting. And that must be what it takes to be successful. So I'm out. If we only ever hear from the extroverts who are super outgoing, they're going to think that's not my personality. Can't do it. There's got to be people who are willing to be the leader in that area. I was talking to somebody who said, I have a man on my team, and he feels left out. I'm like, tell him to be the leader. Tell him to be the leader. If he feels left out, step up and be the leader. Stop looking to the left and right and take ownership of that. And I've had people say to me, you know, they relate to me because I was quiet before. If I didn't step up and do these videos, my first video I did, we did a, um, some of you were in that, we did like a, a group to like go dive and whatever, and we were, we were just starting out. And the simple thing that we had to do, create a YouTube channel and had a video that said, my name is Jamie Haskin and I'm a network marketing professional. <laughs> And that was terrifying for me. And I didn't have to show anybody at first. <laughs> it was like the weirdest thing. No, the first training video I had to do, one of the first were Pink Power. Fallon said, I'd like for you to research BioCleanse and do an entire team training on the benefits. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm like, Brittany, listen. I don't even know what's in BioCleanse. So, so I did. I went and researched all those little ingredients that I could not pronounce. And did a team training on it's probably the most boring team training of all time. <laughs> I know something about bio clips. <laughs> got some magnesium. <laughs> but I'll remember. <laughs> but people can relate to each person differently. Someone's going to relate more to Christina. Someone's going to relate more to me or to anybody out there. So wherever you are at as a ruby, senior ruby, emerald, sapphire, diamond, someone is going to relate to you specifically you, but you can't 
do that for them and help other people if you are staying in the shadows. So sometimes that means getting out of your comfort zone, like it was 100% for me, and doing it anyway. You don't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be like you are an expert, like Christina said. If, if it looked like everyone was perfect at the top, do you think I would have felt like, I mean, you guys can relate, do you think I would have felt like I could have made it to the top or done this? I'm sure you guys feel the same way, you know? So if you are not doing some of these things, why? Write down why and think about that and spend time thinking about that later. And then also ask yourself the why that you're not doing this, how much money is that making you? Right. Better yet, how much money could it be costing you? Yeah. Well, I'm afraid of what people will think. How much money is that costing you? Yes, yes, yes. So, taking ownership. This is all you guys. Don't look to your sidelines, your uh, uplines, diamonds to do everything to emulate them, you take ownership, start with you. Christine's already touched base on that. So um, it's not just one and done either. Don't make one video and think, okay, I did it, I'm done, peace. <laughs> Keep doing it, right? Um, another thing, I don't even remember what topic I'm on. Oh, being a leader yourself, right? So you need to be coachable. So that means you need to have humility and grace and look for things to change. We touched base on this yesterday with Christina. Be coachable, ask your upline, look for ways to improve, evaluate what you need to change, hear from your upline. If you want to be excellent, you need to look at how you can improve your skills. Um, signs that you are, as a leader, maybe not coachable. If you maybe listen to trainings without thinking about how it applies to you, Maybe you're listening and not taking action. Or maybe you're listening and thinking of everybody else who needs to hear this training. <laughs> but you have to look at yourself first. Um, if you feel like you are coachable, but at the end of the day, you're really only accountable to yourself. So are you really doing what you're saying? Oh yeah, I'm coachable, I'm doing all those things. Take stock of what you're actually doing and are you really doing them? So you need to be critical and analyze yourself and take responsibility for what you are doing or not doing and be honest with yourself. If you are not where you want to be, don't look at your team, look at yourself. I've said this before too, you're not a diamond because you have something to learn. You have to grow through things, right? So are you trying to figure out what that is though? You're not where you're at or where you want to be. Are you trying to figure out why? Are you hungry? Doing the personal growth book, and Fallon had said this, so I want to make sure to point this out. If you are reading a book, but you put it back on the shelf, and you haven't changed five things in your business because of that book, then you did not apply it. So go into reading every book with thinking, what are the five things I am going to change in my business because of this book? You have the tools. Staying 10 steps ahead of your team. So, a leader looks for things before they happen. If you are developing leaders, if you are momentum, whatever it is, you need to be proactive and look ahead of time at what could go wrong or what could be missing. Preventing problems is a whole lot easier than dealing with them afterwards and trying to fix problems. For example, if you have someone getting a lot of joints but all of a sudden you have this runaway leg who is not duplicating things, that's okay at first. Well, how, come, how about when they get farther and farther and farther, and then you have to backpedal and you have a bunch of people, maybe even some leaders being developed that are not duplicating, and that's gonna cause massive, massive problems. It's the law of navigation, guys. It's the law of navigation. You can't wait, think about if you're, a pi uh, not piloting your ship, what's it called, captaining your ship. And if you're not looking far ahead, you know how hard it is to turn a really big ship on a dime? It's impossible. You've got to be looking ahead so that you can correct course. Right? I have so many of my leaders, especially the ones who grow quickly, that say, thank you so much for looking far enough ahead that you could prepare me for what was to come. I'm really glad I wasn't caught off guard by the fact that this is something that we should expect. And that comes back to being bold, right? Not being afraid to step on toes. Not being afraid to help call things out. If you've already cast that vision, gotten a why, gotten a belief, gotten a question that Tiffany said, you know, someone's holding back in your business, can I tell you, then that is your responsibility right there. Hands down, forever, your responsibility to be the leader to the person so that you can help them through the things. And guys, 
guys, it's okay to have to tell your team this might feel hard. <laughs> there's, there's, we shouldn't hide that from them. If somebody's selling them easy, it's probably sleazy. No, this is hard work. It should feel hard. So what does that look like? You are asking questions, and you are on coaching calls, and you're in your virtual office. These are the, this is the window to your business. Without those things, you're driving blind. Mm -hmm. Virtual office, coaching calls. It's non-negotiable. You can't help develop leaders if you're not doing those things. So it doesn't look like just going in your virtual office and checking your own points, and stalking your points, and then maybe blaming and getting down. So you're looking in your virtual office at silvers. You're looking at golds. You're looking at individual legs. Who's up in points? Who's down in points? Who's up in joints? Who's down in joints? Why? Going back to asking questions. Compare months back to back. You need to learn how to look and navigate and what to look for in your virtual office. And if you don't know, then you need to ask more questions and talk to your upline. Look for patterns, things that are changing, that are not changing. And you're not looking just for the for the bad news. If I'm looking and I notice the team is cranking out a bunch of silvers, I'm looking at an opportunity. Okay, this is an opportunity for me to raise this leader up. Girl, what are you doing? Y'all are killing it over there. Oh my gosh, the team needs to hear from me. Why don't you go make a training video? Yes. You're looking for things that are good, and then you're also going, okay, this team over here is cranking out 15 silvers. This team over here hasn't had one. We need to figure out why, right? Always be validating people, calling out their strengths over and over again. You guys were a part of that exercise yesterday. It felt good to say good things about each other, right? You have to validate and build that culture and build people up so they feel confident. Oh yeah, I am doing this. I can do this. And it's good for them to see other people being validated. Think about, so I was a school teacher and sometimes if my class was not acting the right way, I could have spent time chasing all of the runaways what instead I would be like, oh my gosh, listen, Courtney, you are doing such a great job. Your eyes are facing forward. Your feet are firmly on the ground. You know what everybody else would do? Mm -hmm. Maybe she'll notice me. Maybe she'll notice me.